Hello, once again we're out here at the Freefly Systems test field and today I've got a fun new little project going on that I'm going to show you. This is a crappy little foam board glider. Looks like something I would have built 10 years ago. <laughs> Actually probably even worse than something I would have built 10 years ago, but that's totally okay for what we're doing. The entire purpose of building this plane was to answer one question, and that is how will the PX4 autopilot behave on an aircraft with no motor? Gliders are not supported by PX4 or Ardu Pilot, so I want to know if the flight controller will still be able to return the glider to home with no motor. I'm going to take it up with the trusty Freefly Alta here, and then drop it way up high and the goal is to have it just fly back home and then loiter which means it just kind of circles above the home position until it eventually hits the ground now this is just phase one of the project just to test if the concept works and if px4 is a autopilot platform that i'm able to use for this i'm not exactly sure what this project will turn into right now i'm kind of envisioning a high altitude weather balloon type situation where the glider gets lifted up to the edge of space and then released and it glides all the way back home fully autonomously <clears throat> and it would hopefully get some cool GoPro shots but that's far out in the future right now we're just gonna see if this thing will fly home like a good dog minus the flying so as far as the components go I've got a Pix racer flight controller on here some little cheap M8N eBay GPS some 9 gram servos for the control surfaces another servo to release the glider from the drone. It's funny that this whole airframe probably cost actually less than a dollar and yet it's still running the same flight controller software that some tens of thousands of dollar industrial drones use. Pretty cool that that's possible with PX4 open source software like that. I've got a Dragonlink nano receiver here and it is going to be sending telemetry data to my Dragonlink transmitter on my radio and then that is connected to Q ground control on my laptop so I can see what flight mode I'm in I can see where it is and all that stuff you'll see if you're not familiar with px4 it's pretty cool but enough talk let's try this out Okay, so now I'm going to drop it and flip into mission mode looks like it's coming back now Oh, there it is Coming in nice and majestically and I'm not doing a thing. How neat is that? What's it gonna do? What's it gonna do? Oh, it's starting to loiter now. It's starting to turn. Wow, that's so cool. So the reason that I used the throttle to drop the glider was because I have the little drop servo on the throttle channel. See how that works. So this actually wasn't the first flight. I did a few earlier tests and it actually wasn't quite working as well before. For some reason, I'm still not able to get it to go into return mode and just fly directly to home. I have to set a waypoint at my home location and then put it into mission mode and have it fly to the waypoint. But I'm still working on it. I'm gonna play around with the settings and see if I can get it to just do a return to home. Before when I would put it into return mode, it would just loiter in place and then eventually touch down and never come back. On one of the flights, the glider actually almost hit a goose when it was landing. Pretty funny, unless you're a goose. Releasing. There it goes. Weird. It's not doing a perfect circle. It kind of Started to do a figure eight kind of thing. It it did one of those, but interesting, huh? Drop and return. Return, it's doing it this time. Huh, I wonder what changed. Why is it working? Look at that, beautiful. Fully autonomous. Plop. This is somewhat of a continuation to the RC drop glider shuttle project that I was doing a really long time ago.
I don't know what the next portion of this project will look like. I think it would be really cool to do a 3D printed airframe that's kind of like a shuttle shape similar to this. Maybe like a lifting body even. Something that has a really steep glide slope, just flies really fast, kind of glides like a brick, and then have it return to home autonomously. That's not ideal. So, uh, where is it? It just went into fail safe. My Dragon Link was set to low power and it lost our C Link and then dropped on its own. But it seems to be doing exactly what it should. I just clicked the Alta into return to home, so it's coming home autonomously too. So many autonomous vehicles. Nice. Okay, here we go. Going to drop it and put it into return mode. Oh, it's in hold. I'm gonna try switching. It's still in hold. Why? Come on. Reject auto return to launch. Huh. I don't want that. Oh, it's way up there still. Huh. So this time it rejected auto return to launch. Maybe the most reliable way of doing it is just putting it into fail safe. I don't know. Now I'm gonna have to go all the way over there to get it. So I took the micro SD card from the Pix Racer and plugged it into this PX4 flight data viewer. And it's really awesome. If you've never seen this before, you should definitely check it out. You have all sorts of data that was logged about your flight, like altitude, speed, angle, rotation rate, like all that stuff. And I checked all the errors that were logged and they didn't really give me any insight into why it wasn't returning to home but it did show that it was just repeatedly switching back to loiter mode. So that's not super helpful, but the data viewer is really cool. There's also this flight replay mode where you can play back your flight in 3D space, and the model on the screen is the exact representation of your plane, and it shows exactly what it did and where it went. It's pretty amazing. We are heading up once again, and this time I made a mission, so I'm gonna switch it into mission mode, and the mission is to fly home and then uh, land at this waypoint, which is just down the road there. So it should come home and the approach angle should be from above here to over there. Throttle down and mission flight mode. Looks like it's coming home. It's right overhead. Let's see if it does what it's supposed to. It just circled around home. And it just landed. Um, <laughs> roughly where it was supposed to. I don't know if I'd call that close, but <laughs> sort of close, I guess. That was kind of cool. I'll try it again. So at this time I set a mission that's kind of the opposite. It's going to fly to a point out there and then try and land right here. So if it works well, it should crash into the trailer. Okay, here we go. Dropping and mission mode and Alta come home. Okay, looks like it's working. Circling at the first waypoint. There it is. Um, I think it's coming back too soon. I don't know what it's doing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's it doing? <laughs> oh no. Why? Why did it do that? So it was too high. It hit the first waypoint too high. Oh, I think I know why. Since it doesn't have any altitude control, I set the waypoint altitude acceptance height to be like 200 meters. So it wasn't trying to get to the height of the waypoint before landing. It was like 200 meters, ab or it could have been 200 meters above that and it still would have accepted the waypoint and then tried to land. So maybe I need to reduce that parameter a bit. But if you're just trying to get it to come home, I think it's fine to have that acceptance altitude really large. But for like approach angles and waypoint missions like this, it's uh, not ideal, I guess, because now I have to go find the plane in a bunch of thorn bushes. At least this big tall wall of trees is here to prevent it from flying into the slough on the other side. But this is gonna be really tough because all of these kind of viney looking bushes are blackberry bushes and they're, they're just covered in thorns. I also just don't know where it is. I spent a few minutes hacking away at the blackberry bushes and I made an opening in the fence right underneath the barbed wire right there. And I found, I went over to the other side and I found it. I just couldn't really see it from this side for some reason. Yeah, I'm definitely bleeding in a lot of places. Oh yeah, that's real bad. 
and there's just gnarliness in between us. God damn it. Sitting over here, there just so happens to be a crap load of really long tubing, which seems quite lucky, but I don't know if it's light enough for me to pick it up. Oh my God, this is literally perfect. Wow. <laughs> Oh, this is hilarious. I was able to poke it through to the other side, and then on the other side I had to climb through the blackberry bushes and grab it, but it worked. Safe and sound. It's in good condition, too. I bet it can still fly. When I start doing higher altitude or longer distance tests with this project, I'll definitely put this thing on the plane. It's the Pinpoint RC Lost Plane Tracker and it sends the GPS position of the plane to your app via a cellular connection. So you can always see where it is. And it's got a built-in battery so that if it becomes unplugged from the aircraft, it'll still transmit the location. It's pretty cool, so I'll be testing this out later. <laughs> Noise. Well, I think that wraps up this portion of the project. This was a great little test platform for what I hope to eventually become the high altitude autonomous glider project. Now we know the autopilot can do it and we know kind of the characteristics of how the autopilot behaves. So at this point, I think the next step is to 3D print an airframe and transfer these electronics onto it and drop it from the Alta and see how it does. See if it might be a good candidate for high altitude stuff. So anyways, that's all. Until next time, thanks for watching, bye.